Every year, we seem to have a story here in Tampa of a hometown boy who does well. And this year is no exception. This gentleman was born in Lowell, Massachusetts, spent some time in Puerto Rico, but then he settled here in the East Bay Area in St. Pete. He was brought to the then St. Pete Boxing Club at the ripe old age of 10. Later, of course, it was the 4th Street Gym under the tutelage of Florida Boxing Hall of Famer Jim McLaughlin. He then proceeded to embark on an amateur career that saw him win every championship in the state of Florida and eventually a trip to the National Golden Gloves Finals. He turned pro in 1991 and as a super featherweight, fighting many of his fights right here in the Bay Area. He fought all the top men of his day. He challenged for a world title three times against the likes of Joel Casamayor and Steve Forbes. Two of those title bouts ended in very controversial split decisions. He stepped out of boxing after a 14-year career in 2005. His final record, 46 wins, 6 losses, 29 wins by knockout, 32 of his fights right here in Florida. These days he works as a personal trainer at his beloved 4th Street Gym and continues to work actually in the diamond industry, which is where he got his well-known nickname. Please join me in welcoming to the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame Class of 2013, former world title challenger, Diamond David Santos. Thank you. Thanks to Florida Boxing Hall of Fame. Bear with me a little bit because I'm pretty emotional myself. A lot of hard work. Whew. I'm not here to really talk about what I've accomplished in the sport of boxing because everyone can pretty much look that up with the internet today. I've done a lot of great things and we all know that. I'm here to actually thank the people who got me here because without them, I wouldn't be here. First of those are my mom and my dad. Of course, if they didn't meet each other and decided to do what they did, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Same time I got into boxing because I got dropped off at home with, by a sheriff, and I think my dad at that point might have wanted to give me back to wherever I came from. So he put me, so probably after maybe a year of restriction, he decided he wanted to do something with me, and I, I just happened to have a friend of mine who was in boxing, and I said, well, let's try to do that. Never in a million years would I ever expected that I would be where I am in today. And um, boxing is basically, I would say, saved my life. I've heard a lot of you guys talk about the people we meet in boxing, and you know, and it is one of those sports that once you get in, it's hard to get out. Um, I want to thank a lot of people in my family, and my family, and this is I call boxing people that are around me my family for a reason because they are, we are a family. We weren't just fighters and, and trainers, and you know, I talked about some. We would heard some of you guys talking about some fighters who train with somebody and then they would leave them and go somewhere else. I'm a loyal guy. I'm a loyal guy in boxing, I'm a loyal guy in, fa in my life, and my family, and with my job. I want to thank whew, my friend Fast Freddy Nymphius, the man who gave me the, the, name, the nickname Diamond Day because he worked with um, Mason Dixon in the Q105 team back then. And he's uh, a good guy, a great guy. I'm gonna, you know, I always remember Freddy because uh, every time we went on a trip, the first thing we had to do was stop by uh, a 7-Eleven and pick up a case of uh, Miller uh, Ice House or something. He also told me, uh, you know, he, he, he was also the guy, if you ever wanted a ticket for somewhere, call Freddy. <laughs> he knew somebody or somewhere or, so, or something, he can get us in there. I think my friend Rick Ronigan, who uh, started late with us, but he, uh, he learned the hard way. He wanted to... Uh, work with the team and be basically holding mitts. 
I happened to teach him that prior when I was training for uh, Carlos Hernandez for the world title, so he, heard it, he learned it the hard way. But he's a great guy. He's like a brother to me. John Vince Guerra, Joel Salmon, Bob Donaldson. These guys are uh, incredible guys. That without them, I don't know how far I would have made it in the sport because they were financially supportive. I, I want to thank Crawford Kerr, the owner of the Wing House. I don't know if you guys know this guy, but this guy is one of a kind. Um, tough up front, but um, in person, he is probably the most given man in the world that I've ever met, besides my trainer that I will get to in a bit. So Crawford Kurt, thank you for being my friend and the brother I never had. I want to thank one guy that was uh, basically giving me a chance in life besides boxing. <laughs> my boss is Gary Sanchez. I still remember the day when I told him I was going to get out of sport and I was ready to give him 100%. And he supported me by basically paying for my graduate gemology degree. And with that, showing him the dedication he gave to me, I want to give back to him. Him and his wife have been extremely special to me. And um, just like I said, we're all a family. Thank you. Thank you, Gary and Cheryl. <laughs> Not too many people here are thanking their in-laws, but I'm going to thank mine. <laughs> And the one moment that I have to tell you, I mean, they're great in-laws. Of course, they gave me the right to marry their daughter. Thank you. I don't know why. They probably wish they didn't now. Um, when I fought Carlos Hernandez and I got cut, in the round, you know, I got cut from a headbutt and I had to go to the hospital, they decided they wanted to be the ones to take me to the hospital to get uh, stitched up. And I'm not a needle guy. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like needles. <laughs> my mother-in-law says, you can hold my hand. I said, I might break it. <laughs> so that's the moment that will always be with me her you know her and her husband my father-in-law it'll be with me forever they just being you know it was just awesome to have someone there my, my wife unfortunately couldn't be there that night because she was pregnant with my first child marissa and uh that was tough <sighs> and of course i got to thank the one person i'm here the main man he was a hall of famer last year jim mclaughlin this guy is just not a trainer. He's my friend. He's like my dad. My, in -law, my parents died when I was young. This guy basically took me in. And not just me. I sit there and watch the stuff he did for other fighters. And unfortunately, they didn't get to go as far as I did. And they probably didn't repay him back you know, as much as I want to repay him. But I don't think there's anything. There's ever enough money and words that I can say and, do and give that would repay what he's done for, done for me. So, Jim, well set. Thank you. I love you, man. I want to end with a saying that someone, you know, I've read many times and many people have told me. They say, you're only as good as the people you hang out with. Well, goddamn, I'm pretty damn good. Thank you very much, Florida Hall Boxing Hall of Fame. <laughs>